How is up, everyone? Today, I like to make a little guide on how to clear Master High Midgard Samar. Despite the fact that I probably should have made this guide like three or four days ago when I cleared it initially, but I was so tired, it was the worst experience in my life that I just simply didn't have the energy to do so. Now, there's still a day left to clear this. And I figure that since there are still people, many people in fact, running into trouble on how to run Ramona or something like that in the map, I've decided to go and get started on a guide on how to get this going. So that, if not today, in the near future, in a few weeks from now, when it comes back in rotation, you'll know how to do this fight. Especially as Ramona, because Ramona has the toughest job in the game in regards to a high midguard. Everybody else, they can probably just sit on their asses and just, and just spam their buttons and play brain dead. But Ramona has the toughest job. So, I will now show you how it's done. Let us begin. Okay, so let's start things off with the opening. In my opinion, this is one of the most crucial moments in the entire fight. Because of how much free damage you can do to high midguard Samar, this can make the difference between, oh, painstakingly going through all the harsh mechanics of high midguard Samar, without making any mistakes for your entire team and then still getting a timeout and actually making it clear. So I'm gonna go over in very very precise detail as to how I manage my opening, dish out tons of damage to high midguard and giving us an easier time to clear the map. Alright, let's begin. Okay, so the first thing you do, you go up to high midguard and hit him as many times as you can before the opening blast. Generally four hits. After that, you hit him twice, and then start quickly rolling towards his direction. Sometimes you'll be able to get past without getting hit at all, and even if you do get hit, you'll end up flying towards him anyway, land on your feet, allowing you to continue your string of combination. After that, you hit him a couple times, you can even hit him one more time while Triton is still showing up on the screen, then roll away, use a force strike, Hit him a couple more times, two times is their max. Then roll back to the center, wait for Storm Strike to pass, and then move over to the top right corner, where you can finally begin to start pounding on high midguard. Generally, the team should be following your instructions on how Storm Strike works and sticks in the center of the map so that they don't get in the way of your opening. If you pull this off, you'll get 10 hits of your uh, Forge Buster before High Midgard could do anything. As I mentioned before, you can do ridiculous amount of damage during this time frame. So if you somehow screw it up, I highly recommend just starting over again. After the initial Forge Buster, Ramona is to stay on High Midgard and the rest of her team should make room for her. In fact, I've seen so many times where a run just gets ruined because people end up being on top of Ramona or they get a desync. So I tell my teammates, okay, listen, during this time, don't walk out last second, walk out last two seconds. Now, this Emma that's been plaguing me with these things suddenly doesn't anymore, and looks appears to be like rolling out in time. So that is the timing that you should have your teammates as here to. The reason behind this is simple. There's a very specific timing that as long as you keep hitting high midguard, as soon as Forge Buster comes up, you can use it and it'll immediately give you the precise timing to go through his entire spin phase before spitting the spits. That way you can do the maximum amount of DPS while still be able to bait for the rest of your team. Forge Buster is a very annoying skill to use so you always want to make sure that you use all six charges of it because otherwise you're not going to remember the timing for oh five charges or four charges it's already annoying enough to try to time your spin right before the spits if you screw it up you sometimes you get spit on sometimes you get spin on and then spit on and speaking of spits one of the best way to go about doing this is either use forge buster or you roll through them three times in a row if you're a greedy person such as me you will try to hit him as you're rolling. This is how you do 40 hit combo right in the beginning, building up all the SP you can for the perfect opening against High Midgard. Afterwards, High Midgard will jump backwards. Then, you should have your skill 3 activated. 
you can dish out more damage. If all three hits crit, you can do 10k damage. Oh no, 10k, 100k damage to high midguard. That is the key to the strongest high midguard Samar opening. After that, you move out, trigger the storm strike. And as you can see here, as soon as High Midgard does this little gesture where he points up in the sky and he takes a small break, he will do a rush and then he will start spinning. That is when you use your Forge Buster again. And so the cycle continues. Spits, the greedy me hits. Spits, the greedy me hits. And so on and so forth. Next thing, He's going to go and launch a bunch of ground shit. You move away from the ground shit again. And that is the chaser's face. Again. During this phase, I'll let Rina do all the damage. Chaser activates. And then I will move in to bait high midguard again. So this next part is important. You want to stick to high midguard and you want to make sure that he pushes you towards the center where all the golems are. So you direct yourself into a direction where if he were to go forward, he would push you towards the center. Or if you're lucky, he's already in the center and he will simply nudge you a few inches forward. And then you can use your forge buster along with the charge timing to wipe out the golems together, dishing out amazing amount of damage. Afterwards, you do the spit and let your teammates do all the work. The timing for this is also pretty specific. You have to wait for high midguard to slowly bend over and go oh, to call on his teammates and then you activate Forge Buster. That way you'll make it just in time for him to push you and do the little spin and still be able to recover fast enough to control the spits. After the golems, HMS will do an 8-way, then he'll do a quick little hop back, and that's when we begin the most fun phase of the fight, Gales! Now that once he activated Gale Blast, you have to remember these patterns. So this is the pattern that High Midgard will throw his Gales, with one being the activated Gales, and two being the inactive Gales. And these are the specific locations that you need to go to when the Gale arrives. So if the diagram tells you to go to the left side, you go to the left side where it's green, see where the tree roots are? And then, after the winds pass, you dodge right. If it appears in the center, then you dodge left or right, and if it appears to be right, you dodge left. The principal reasoning behind the Gales are actually really simple. The Gales always move forward, and the activated Gales go first. So you just need to look at this, the screen, even if you don't remember the diagram, just remember, activated Gales move forward. That is how you remember how to dodge the Gales. As for the timing on how to dodge the Gales, there are different ones. The first one is where he uses a Storm Strike, so you want to stand in the center and then move to your safe spot. That way, Storm Strike won't hit you, and you'll be in time to make a dodge. Now, when it comes to actually dodging the Gales, I have three words for you. Don't think. Feel. Feel when the wind passes by, and then immediately dodge. Just don't even think about it, just dodge. If you end up thinking about it, overthinking about it, this is what will happen, and this is how a whole run is ruined and you can start all over again. Alright, so we clear the first hurdle, the first gale in the game. Now, first thing Ramona needs to do is run over the high midguard as quickly as she can and take control of the situation. The rest of her teammates, even if they're closer to the high midguard, needs to get out the hell out of the way so that she can do this. Now once again, the previous timing is the same. You wait for just about the time where he starts spitting and then you use Forge Buster. Then, right afterwards, he'll do his little gesture, and that's when he'll do a charge. Since you already used Forge Buster, you either get Ram over like this, or you have a skill ready, and you can get the hell out of the way. Either way, once you finish that, 
you do a spin, and then he'll go back to spinning again. Ideally, you want to have a skill ready, but now I was greedy and used all my skills ahead of time because I like to do more damage. But now, I have one ready from all the dodging, and I'm able to dish out extra damage in the midst of the spits. Then he'll do a jump back, and he'll use Trident. You know how to do that. Ramona just baits it away, and you keep hammering with our on our buddy. Now, for the next important part about this fight. Now, this next part is very important. Afterwards, our pal will do some ground shit and storm strike combo. Now, for this specific example, I made sure that my team has just enough overdrive remaining so that we can break him, because right afterwards, he'll summon for Gale. If you do this, quickly go and gather around, jerk yourselves off, and blow your load all over his face. That way you'll do chunks and chunks of damage, and that'll free you up for clearing the map much easier. You do a lot of damage during this phase. Sometimes I see 300k on Ramona. Now, afterwards, he will use this marker. This marker is the whole reason why the second set of Gales is so annoying. So this is one way of clearing the second Gale. Now another way you can do this is to do the same exact thing, except with Arctos, so that you can Arctos the bear thing, so that you can use his stun to cancel High Midgard as he says Tempest comes forth. You do this in case you do oh too much damage and you can't just hold on to an overdrive like we did, where we our D team DBS wasn't quite enough. Now, third method is to use a dragon. Since our Emma doesn't have Arctos, we set up Emma to go and bait the marker by being closest to high Midgard. Then, Emma will immediately turn into Cerberus, or whatever that has a high, long animation, and then activate her skills. That way, she'll go through the entire phase without getting hit, and everyone is safe. Now, if Emma or anyone else doesn't have Cerberus to do this tank, then simply all just dragon together, dodge the wind, and use your dragon, and you'll all be safe. Now, right afterwards, our pal is gonna go and do this yet again. So, you know the cue. After the spin, get ready to set up for dodging those spits. Now I forgot to mention this before, but right as he's about to spit, if you have Forge Buster active, you can just go through the entire spit without any damage. But you have to time that specifically to right as he's about to spit. Now another problem that we just saw is, is that Rina, if Rina's too close to you, too close to high midguard as you're doing those three rolls, there's a chance that Rina will grab aggro. That's something that Rina needs to look out for, because otherwise Rina could wipe out the team. We're you know, it nearly just happened. Alright, so now, our pal will use Trident. You smash him. Uh-oh, we're running out of time. And here comes the third set of Tempest. Now this Tempest is a little different from the first one. This time, Storm Strike and the Gale will hit at the same time. So, once you go to your dodge spot, immediately after the wind starts moving, you move. That way, Storm Strike will hit the same location that you were dodging before. You get away from the Gales, and you bypass the third Gale this way. Immediately afterwards, our pal is going to do a Chaser and Pillar combo. So you use your um, Smith Shield to beef up your attack, and then right afterwards, as he's doing the Pillar, smash his face in with your Forge Buster. The timing for Forge Buster is pretty simple. You either do it during this time, during a charge, during a spit. That was for the safest time for you to go and use Forge Buster. <coughs> now, the final stretch. After a spin, he always does this. It's just in and out, in and out, in and out. <coughs> Everybody's getting nervous, they're using their dragons because they want to see this come to an end. Our pal uses Trident again. He uses Trident. And since we're about out of time, we blow our load all over 
I mid guard. He'll once again go back to Rending Blast, but we're not gonna see the end of this. We're just gonna give him a face full of Sakura. And that's when High Midgard goes. And then you win. And that, my friend, is how you get past High Midgard. And let me tell you, uh, when I first cleared it, it was really funny. The, the healer of my team was so excited, he just started spamming on Discord. The reason behind this is very simple. My healer here has spent days trying to do the fight and finally come along this Ramona who got him past this horrible situation and finally we all cleared first time together. So he was really excited and he just spams his discord channel. All I see is just words flying up in the air and all I can do is laugh. Can't be helped because we were supposed to stop right when reset was going to come and we managed to clear it right at reset. So I managed to pass through this while still having my times two bonus with my chest. But anyway, so that's how you go and clear high midguard some more. I hope our experience will help you with your endeavor as well. I thank you all for watching. Until next time.